Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these really cute pillow lap trays. So we are going to be going down to Florida this year. We are going in November, so it's going to be a 21 hour drive. Um, I'm just looking for, you know, solutions for when the kids get bored in the car and, you know, if they want to color or if they want to play with their Legos or something. So I figured I would get them something like this. So in the stores, they're about 10, you know, $15. And all it is is a tray with a pillow on the bottom. So I figured I'd make it myself. So I went over to the Dollarama and I found these trays. These are actually a really good size because, you know, they don't have a lot of room because of their car seats. So, and they also have this non-stick surface, which is great so that the toys and their crayons won't go sliding all over the place um, if we, you know, turn a corner or something. So, of course, if you can't find this tray, I'm just going to show you guys how to make your, you know, how much fabric to cut for your tray. So you're just going to measure it out, your measurements, and then I'll tell you how to make it for your size. Um, more information for this will be at the blog post, which will be linked below, as well as the information icon. And if you're interested in learning how to make this, then stick around, and I would love it if you would pin it and you know share it with all your friends you know especially the mommies because this is such a handy little thing and it's a great little tv tray too so you can have it on your lap when you're you know having one of those pizza nights or something so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you do please give me a thumbs up and i will see you guys in my next video okay so here is my dollarama tray you can check out your dollar tree see what they have if you want to get a cheaper version i really like this one because it's a little bit bendy um, they do have some hard plastic ones that i'm afraid that if my kids dropped it it would probably crack so i really like this one and then i am using some jersey knit fabric you can use cotton i use both and they both work perfectly so I'm now going to measure the base of my tray and it was 13 inches by 10 inches and then I'm going to cut out a piece of cardboard that is 13 by 10 inches. My fabric I'm going to cut out at 13.5 inches by 10.5 inches just to give myself some seam allowance and then I'm going to cut out the side piece which will be 4 inches by the length of all four of your sides so if you have your own piece then just measure all four sides and then add one inch mine ended up being four inches by 49 inches and now I'm going to hem the top of the side piece you don't necessarily have to do this I did it thinking that it would make it a little bit neater but in the end it didn't really matter so if you want to do it you can but you really don't have to in the end so now I'm going to take the side piece and I'm going to clip it to the main piece of the pillow, lining up the sides with the right sides together. And then make sure when you get to the corner, you pivot the fabric so that it follows that corner. And then we will go around back to the beginning. And I didn't sew the side piece in a loop I'm going to sew the majority of it and then when I get to this portion I will measure and make sure that it fits nicely and I'll just sew that quick and then finish sewing the rest of um, rest the rest of the side piece down so now I'm going to bring it over to the sewing machine and sew all of that down I'm going to be using a half inch seam allowance and yeah it's pretty straightforward so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial so far if you are I would love it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because sometimes YouTube doesn't like to tell you when I post tutorials and if you make this I would love to see it so you can follow us on our Facebook we have lots of people in the Facebook group and then my Instagram also so once I've done the majority of it this is where I would stop and then I would finish sewing the side seam here if you have one inch seam allowance and then you sew it at a half inch then it should work out if you just cut a big long strip and you want to measure it at the end then you can do that too and then I'll just keep 
sewing the rest of it down and then we pretty much have the, the pillow portion so we can start securing it onto our cardboard I don't know if you can get away with not using cardboard this is how they did it in the store so I'm assuming the cardboard helps it stick to the tray better so we will be sewing through the cardboard I'm going to take my pillow and I'm going to line up the sides and fold it over the cardboard. Find the middle of your side and then put the middle in the middle of the cardboard, if that makes sense. Um, it could be a little bit bigger depending on if you have a stretch fabric. Mine kind of, you know, it was a little bit stretched, but that's okay. Um, you're just going to sort of like you're you know covering a chair you're just going to go all the way around it and when you get to the corners it's gonna have you know some excess fabric you're just gonna kind of pleat it into place so it will be a little bit messy but that's okay because it will be hidden underneath your tray so you don't have to worry about that so you can make it as nice as you want but you're not gonna see it totally fine you're gonna put glue all over it so just do the best you can and then we can sew all the way around. So if you've never sewn paper or cardboard in your machine, this will be a first. <laughs> um, it's totally okay. I would recommend um, sewing with a larger stitch length. So I went up to a three, even a 3.5, just because you don't want to have your stitches too close together and then you're gonna be basically perforating the cardboard and then it'll just kind of break off and then you won't be securing it to anything because you're you're gonna you know basically create a, a line and you're cutting the cardboard so give it a good long stitch length and then you should be just fine so we're gonna sew all the way around and we're gonna leave about a five to seven inch gap and that's going to be where we're going to stuff our pillow and for this project you could use pillow stuffing or you could use some beanbag chair stuffing so I saw both with these pillow trays um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of both because the pillow stuffing does flatten over time and the you know beans won't but if you don't have beans it's totally fine just use your pillow stuffing you want to fill it but you don't want to fill it too much so that it still molds onto your lap. So if you're gonna be brave like me and use that bean bag stuffing, it is very staticky, especially if you have a dry house and it's getting colder so the heat's on so it's even drier and it just sticks and it just like all over you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure whenever I use that stuff, 10% ends up on the floor and eventually in the vacuum. That's just, you know, how it goes with that stuff. Or the kitty cat plays with it. So after you're done filling it to your desired, you know, firmness, then you will just put that little piece of fabric back and then finish sewing that cardboard. And then you can decide how you want to secure it to your tray. I will be using E6000. Um, I think it's best to use a glue that dries over time just because you're going to be using so much glue that if you did use a hot glue gun, the glue would probably be dried by the time you go to, you know, put it on the back of your tray because you want to give it a good generous amount. So I just slathered on the E6000 all over the back and then I let it dry. I actually put like a, um, a laundry basket full of clothes on top of it and it secured nicely and now I don't have to worry. I tried to like, you know, rip it off and it was, it was absolutely fine. So just make sure you put some of the glue on the fabric and then a lot of the glue onto the cardboard. And then after it's dry, then you're done. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you pin it and share it with your friends over all the social media sites. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any more questions or if you didn't understand something, um, there will be more information at the blog post linked in the information icon. 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.